Hello and welcome to episode 11 of The Adventures of Keridwen. And The title of this episode is No Longer Free. The following morning Keridwen woke up with a start when a human called out, What's this one doing outside? And before she could escape, she was bundled into a small pen. She had fallen asleep outside the local farmer's auction, and the auction was today. Whose sheep is it anyway? continued the human. It's not very nice being talked about like this, thought Keridwen. Check her tag, replied another. Keridwen had forgotten that Mrs. Owen had put an identity tag in her ear. Moments later, an official-looking person in a white coat came out of the site office with a clipboard to announce, She's from the batch we sold at the end of winter, from that farm that went bust. So how did she get here? I haven't a clue. Who bought the other lot? Some were bought by Donna Jones, the pedigree show winner. The rest were picked up by a chap who was new to farming. He was keen to begin with a distinctive Welsh breed. That's all well and good, said the auctioner. But this straggler belongs to the woman who sold the farm. Put it in the miscellaneous pen with the others. We'll see what she fetches at auction and then send the profits on to Mrs. Owen. Mind you, said the other, I can't see us getting much for her today. She'll most likely end up at the pet food abattoir. Keridwen didn't know what an abattoir was but it did not sound very friendly. Later that morning, Cadewen found herself being looked at by farmers deciding which sheep to buy. Someone's clearly been looking after her, said one. Look, her fleece has been shorn. No use to me, said another. I don't have any black sheep on my farm. For the first time in her life, Keridwen found herself being identified by the colour of her wool, as if it were somehow more important than being a sheep. Obviously, that farmer had upside-down thinking. She wasn't too impressed by the next chap either. He took no real interest in the animals, just totted up their number. This was the ban from the abattoir. The auction began at midday and ended almost two hours later by which time most of the animals had been sold and taken away by farmers. Then a truck pulled up at Keridwen's pen. The driver got out and lowered a ramp, ready to load Keridwen and her companions into his wagon. Keridwen was on her way to the abattoir. Then, from the other side of the pen, a little girl called out. Look, Daddy, that sheep looks like the ones we bought last time. Can we take her home? We only came here to complete the paperwork, said her dad. Please, Daddy, implored the little girl. That sheep looks really sad. Just like me, when Mummy was in hospital. Emily could.
could be very persuasive. Just like the time she had wanted to stay up late and watch the moon. Mummy had said no. But Emily had persuaded Daddy that it would be very educational. She remembers her mummy telling him she's got you wrapped around her little finger. And that little finger was up to its tricks again. Just imagine, said Emily, this sheep could win a prize at the show. Emily had heard her mummy and daddy talking about the show and how good it would be to win a prize. I'm no expert yet, said Daddy, but she does look rather handsome. And so it was that Kerridwen found herself in a much smaller trailer. She had avoided the abattoir, but the search for her family had come to an end. She could not see very much from the trailer. But as she looked through a small gap, she recognised the bridge she had visited with Bronwyn the Badger. She was back on Innis Mon, the island of Anglesey. Last time, she and Bronwyn had turned right at the end of the bridge. Today, Emily and her daddy went to the left. Their farm was near to a very beautiful part of Anglesey called Newborough Warren, a place of sand dunes and pine forests, home to wild ponies and, yes, red squirrels. Even if Daddy had wanted to sneak the new sheep in quietly, Emily could not contain herself. Mummy, she cried, look! what we got at the market. Carrigan looked around. This farm was very different to the one she had been born on. The mountains were much further away. The grass here was not very much sweeter than the mountain grass. And it had very different flowers. What was her new life going to be like here, she asked herself. And she wondered if her poem dreams would stop now that the search for her family was over. So, the search is over. And Caridwen is wondering whether her dream poems will stop. What do you think? And surprise, surprise, there is one more episode to go.